The series name is What If Naruto X Enko Harem. So let's start the series. Naruto Uzumaki stood alongside his two teammates Sakura Haruno and Sasuke Uchiha waiting for their sensei to show, as per usual he was very late, Naruto leaned against a tree trying to think of what they, and by they he really meant Sasuke, would learn today, but he didn't really care he had found out a secret last night when he was trying to work on his taijutsu by fighting a horde of clones. That secret was whatever his clones learned he would learn, at least that's what he thought it was. After defeating all his clones he noticed he had their memories of how he beat each one. This made him very happy he finally had something over Sasuke. Naruto looked up just in time to see Kakashi appear via Shunshin, with his standard yo greeting the day began. Kakashi sensei. What are we going to learn today? Naruto asked hoping he would finally give himself and Sakura some pointers, Kakashi looked at him and gave an eye smile. Naruto I need you to work on your chakra control, it's abysmal at best, so get a leaf and practice by holding on your head for as long as you can. Sakura you need to work on your physical conditioning still so start running laps, Sasuke it's time we work on your taijutsu, Kakashi said making Naruto simply turn and walk away, this happened every day. He would give him and Sakura some mundane thing to do while he would focus on Sasuke. Naruto rolled his eyes and left the field not feeling like training, he knew there wasn't a mission today or they would have done that before their training, if you could call it that. Naruto stopped when he remembered that a certain Hyuga had shoved him a few days ago for no reason, it was time for some payback. Kakashi watched Naruto simply leave the training ground and gave a sigh, it seemed like Naruto didn't even care about getting stronger, all that mattered to him was pranking someone. One hour later, not sated in his need for petty revenge on the Hyuga, who now had bright yellow hair and only orange clothes, Naruto moved out of the village and into a field to begin the new training he had concocted. If he learned what his clones learned he could kick up his training. Okay if I remember it right. I remembered the hits and how they happened but I didn't get any stronger, so maybe it doesn't help with my actual strength and whatnot, so maybe keep them on chakra control. I'm going to need a lot of leaves, Naruto thought, he stopped when he heard a crash and a figure came flying into his vision. Whoa, what the hell Kiba? Naruto asked looking at his former classmate, and Naruto. Kiba looked at the blonde in surprise. Hey man, what are you doing out here? Naruto asked. Personal training time with Karinai sensei, she gives each of us a few hours a day two days a week to help us focus on fixing our weaknesses and improving our strengths, Kiba explained. Why do you stop charging Kiba, Karinai said as she appeared on top of a toppled tree. Hello Karinai-san, Naruto gave a light bow to the jonin. Hello Uzumaki-san, Karinai gave a light wave in return. Not to interrupt your training Kiba, Karinai-san, but I have a quick question and since my jonin sensei has been less than useless in training our team I was hoping you might be able to answer my question real quick. Naruto asked, Karinai glanced at Kiba for a moment then gave a smile. Sure we'll take lunch now Kiba, Karinai said with a soft smile. Hi sensei. Kiba said as he sped off to find Akamaru and to get their lunches. What would you like to ask me? Karinai asked. My sensei has said on countless occasions that my chakra control is abysmal at best. What I was wondering was if there is a better way to learn chakra control over the leaf exercise. Naruto asked. Karinai rubbed her chin for a moment wondering if it would be okay to show him the two exercises she knew. After a moment she gave in the boy was asking for help and who was she to send him away. I know of two, water walking and tree climbing, Karinai said, water walking sounds right but tree climbing. Naruto asked, Karinai nodded then moved over to a tree and proceeded to walk up to it, oh like that. Naruto watched in surprise as she easily walked up half the tree and back down. The key to tree walking is getting the right amount of chakra to stick you to the tree, too much and break the bark and shoot off too little and you slip and fall, Karinai explained. And water walking? Naruto asked. Get tree climbing down first then I'll show you water walking, Karinai said Naruto nodded happily then took off to start training. Thank you Karinai sensei. Naruto shouted as he disappeared into the forest. I should probably tell Hokage sama that team 7 hasn't learned tree climbing yet, Karinai thought as she turned back as Kiba landed back in the clearing with their food. Naruto barely managed to stumble into his apartment at the end of the night, he hadn't expected the blowback from his clones to hurt as much as it did, his head felt like it was on fire. He reached his bed and hit it with a thud ready to fall asleep until he heard a soft knock on his window. Eh. Naruto asked as he opened the window to see an ANBU. Hokage-sama wishes to see you tomorrow morning at 10, the ANBU said. Understood, Naruto said with a nod the ANBU vanished and Naruto fell asleep. 
The next morning, Team 7 stood before the Kanoha Council, well three people weren't much of a council but that's what they went by, it was Hamura Midokato, Kohara Yudetane, Danzo Shimura along with the Hokage Hiruzen Sarutobi, the three genin were all confused as to why they were standing before the Hokage and his advisors. I assume you are wondering why you are here? Hiruzen asked, the three simply nodded, even Naruto knew it wouldn't be a good idea to run his mouth, and waited to be told why. What the council and myself have decided to do is every six months the genin teams that are in the rotation will be brought in here from evaluation, Hiruzen explained. These evaluations will work as such, we will hear from each of you one at a time about your progress on your team, nothing you say will be told to your teammates. These evaluations are meant to be a one-on-one -on -one kind of work, we want honest answers and responses. Now if you three will step out, we will be starting with Kakashi. Hiruzen finished and the three genin moved out of the room. Naruto sat waiting still, Kakashi had gone first then was dismissed, he had told them their day was done once they were free from their meeting. Sakura opted to go second since she was the girl, ladies first she told Naruto before she cracked him in the head as he tried to step into the office. Sasuke shoved Naruto out of the way once Sakura left claiming that a clanless dope has nowhere to be so he had plenty of time to wait, Naruto growled, he was really starting to hate Sasuke. And after that last hit from Sakura, he was starting to doubt his love for the pink-haired teammate. Finally, it was his turn and he did not like the looks he was getting once he stepped into the office, Hamura, Koharu, and Danzo all looked upset while Hiruzen looked indifferent, yup, he definitely didn't like those looks. So Naruto like the others we will tell you what Kakashi said about you first, and if he was right I am quite disappointed in you. Kakashi seems to believe that you don't take your training seriously and opt to pull pranks rather than train, Hiruzen said. He nearly fell back when he felt a massive amount of killing intent burst from Naruto and his eyes turned red. He what? I train harder and more than both the pink-haired bitch and the pampered bastard combined, Naruto all but roared, I'm the one that trains until his bones crack, he added. Calm yourself, Hiruzen spoke he didn't like Naruto losing his cool like this, it was dangerous, to say the least. No! I've been the happy-go-lucky dope long enough, I am sick and tired of my team looking down on me, you want to know what I think, Hirono is a useless piece of shit. She doesn't help on missions always claiming it's not a girl's job to pick vegetables or hoe a field. Uchiha never shuts up about how he is simply a better class than me because he comes from a clan and I'm a clanless orphan whose parents abandoned him, as for Hitaki, he hasn't trained me at all. I've trained myself, whether it is by my ninjutsu or taijutsu, all Hitaki does is train Uchiha. That emo bastard has gotten two katan jutsus and taijutsu training while I've gotten jack. Naruto screamed, N. Naruto, Hiruzen stared in shock, if this was true he owed Naruto one hell of an apology, fuck this. I quite team 7. Either give me my own sensei or I'll train myself and become Hokage by myself. It was at this moment Hiruzen noticed Naruto's eyes had shifted back to blue and his hands were bleeding with how tightly he was clenching his hands. We can't give anyone their own personal sensei, Kohara spoke. But you did, Naruto replied. Hitaki hasn't trained me or Hirono, you might as well have made him that bastard sensei and sent us up shit creek, Naruto added. Naruto calm down now, Hiruzen's words instantly affected Naruto, his anger all subsided instantly and his face fell, his eyes were filled with sorrow rather than rage. Now, as to your request. I think I might have an idea for you, Hiruzen grinned, Naruto's eyebrow cocked up as he heard this. Niko, Hiruzen called making an ANBU appear. Yes Hokage-sama? Niko asked. Bring Mitarashi-san to me, Hiruzen said, with a nod, the ANBU was gone. You can't be serious? Hamura asked. She's been asking to become a Jonin sensei for a while, this will be a test for her, Hiruzen said. What about Team 7? Danzo asked. I'll find a replacement and put them under a strict eye, if Hitaki doesn't shape up I'll knock him back down to Chunin and lock him in on solo Tora missions for 6 months. Everyone in the room cringed none of them, Danzo included, liked that demon cat. If you need a spy I might have someone for you, Danzo spoke. We'll talk later, Hiruzen said knowing where Danzo was going to go with it. Who Mitarashi? Naruto asked. Just wait, you'll be in for a surprise, Hiruzen said. Naruto only had to wait two minutes before the door opened and in walked simply the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. She had what he would guess to be shoulder-length purple hair that was kept in a spiky ponytail, pupilless caramel eyes, deliciously pearly white skin. 
and a sexy outfit that consisted of a mesh shirt and shorts with a skirt and trench coat to cover her assets and womanhood, that was when she noticed him and smiled. Whiskers, she said and Naruto's jaw dropped to the ground. H. He. Hibichan, Naruto spoke softly as he looked at the woman. Oh, you remember me still? Anko asked. Naruto couldn't move, his body was frozen, Hibia she went by in her time as an ANBU member was one of his, scratch that she was his most precious person. She had saved him time after time from mobs that would have beaten him within an inch of his life and was the one that gave Naruto his two most precious possessions and gave him his addiction, his gama wallet, his orange jumpsuit, and his love for ramen. Hibichan. Naruto cried as he hugged Anko who happily returned his hug. I've missed you whiskers, Anko laughed as she hugged Naruto. Saved the reunion, Danzo growled he hated watching sappy crap. Sorry Shimura-sama, Anko said with a bow as the two separated. Now as to why I called you here, Hiruzen started, Naruto is to be removed from Team 7 and placed into your care, Hiruzen stated making both of them freeze. Really? Both of them asked. Really, Anko you've wanted to be a Jonin sensei for a while well here's your chance to make Naruto into a splendid shinobi and once he's become a chunin you'll be given your own team. And Naruto I'm giving you what you wanted, a solo sensei so no more pranks, eat right, and train hard, prove to me that Hitaki was wrong, Hiruzen said. I promise. Naruto shouted, okay whiskers. I'll let you have today to rest and get ready for hell. Tomorrow at 6 I want you at training ground 44, Anko smiled. Anko you can't, Kohara stood, he's my genin. I'll train him as I see fit, Anko grinned her eyes stopped on Naruto seeing him smiling brightly and nearly hopping with joy. I'll be there, uh, where do I find training ground 44? Naruto asked. It's the big forest that's fenced off outside of the village, Anko said. You know that scary forest I took you when we had those two rogue ANBU hunting you five years ago. Naruto's eyes widened then he grinned even more. Gotcha. I'll be there at 6 sharp, Naruto said with a salute then he was gone in a flash as he ran from the room with a huge smile on his face. Anko there is a second reason I chose you, Hiruzen said with a stern face. Hi, Anko knelt. My advisors believe that Naruto may be a flight risk. We need you to keep an eye on him, Hiruzen said. No need, Whisker would never leave Kanoha, Anko said. And you know this? Hamura asked, yup, when he was six he proclaimed he would be Hokage, and though I doubt he remembers the second half of his promise, if he did he wouldn't be able to hug me without blushing. What was the second half? Hiruzen asked, that I would be his wife, Anko chuckled, now how could he achieve those two things if he left? Anko added, Hiruzen chuckled lightly at the smile on her face. Mitarashi-san, you cannot take a genin into the forest of death under any circumstances, Kohara said. He's been there before like you've heard, and I distinctly remember Orochimaru team training me in there and Jiraiya-sama trained the fourth and his team in there at one time as well, Anko replied. But, enough Anko is within her rights as a sensei to train Naruto as she deems fit, Hiruzen said. Now Anko you are dismissed. Danzo I believe you wish to speak about a filler for Team 7? Hiruzen turned to face his old partner as Anko vanished. Ah yes, it is a boy I have in root. I'd like to test to see how one of my root agents files back into society, Danzo explained. What is the boy's name? Hiruzen asked. Sai, Danzo replied. Very well bring him. I'd like to meet him before we deploy him, Hiruzen commanded, Danzo nodded and left the room to retrieve him. The next morning, Team 7. Kakashi stood before his team once again they were within the Hokage's tower, what was confusing to Kakashi was that Naruto was nowhere to be seen, the Hokage will see you now. Kakashi nodded and lead his team into the room, he would have to find and scold Naruto later. Ah good time today, Hiruzen said as he put down a field report, now to why I called you here today. Air, er, not to interrupt Hokage-sama but Naruto is not here yet, Kakashi spoke. That is the reason I asked you here, Naruto has demanded to be removed from Team 7, Hiruzen said making all three stop in surprise. So in being removed I called you here to give you your new teammate, Sai please come in, Hiruzen said a moment later a young pale boy with black hair and eyes stepped into the room. He was dressed in a pair of black pants, and a black jacket that had one short sleeve and one long sleeve. Hokage-sama, what's going to happen to Naruto? Sakura asked. We had one of our Tokabetsu Jonin volunteers to train him. If she hadn't he would have been sent back to the academy, Hiruzen answered. That doesn't seem fair, 
he quits our team and is rewarded by getting a solo teacher, Sasuke said with a growl. You'd best revise that tone Sasuke, Hiruzen said leveling just a taste of his KI on him, Sasuke froze as he felt the powerful wave hit him. Of course, my apologies Hokage-sama, Sasuke said weakly. Apology accepted, now you three have to get acquainted, off with you, Hiruzen said with a soft smile. Forest of Death. Naruto stood before Anko deep within the Forest of Death, Naruto glanced around he could see several beasts just beyond the tree line, okay whiskers here's what we are going to do. Enko said, getting Naruto's undivided attention. First we are going work on your taijutsu and find a few ninjutsu that plays to your style, Enko explained. Wait you mean you're not going to just have me focus on my chakra control? Naruto asked. Why? Should I? Enko asked. I don't know that's just what Hitaki did, Naruto replied. Well, I'm not him so how about you get in your taijutsu stance and we start there, Enko said. Naruto nodded and took his stance. Enko's jaw just about hit the ground upon seeing it. It was the worst stance she had ever seen. Okay we're stopping already, your taijutsu is useless, we're throwing it out we'll have to find you a style, Enko said making Naruto look down ashamed of himself. Sorry sensei, Naruto said shyly. It's not your fault, your academy teachers and your jonin sensei should have fixed it, Enko said before an idea hit her, now I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Naruto looked at her oddly for a moment then ran at her cocking his fist back as he did. Enko grinned right up until his first hit her stomach, doubling over instantly Enko realized something, he hit like a bull. After nearly coughing up blood Enko slowly worked her way back to her feet. Holy shit, was all Enko managed to say as she looked at a very worried Naruto. Are you okay sensei? Naruto asked, have you always hit that hard? Enko asked still holding her stomach. She already figured she'd have to see a doctor to make sure she was okay. I don't know. I usually lost my spars because I wasn't fast enough, Naruto said. Well then we know what to work on for the moment. We're going to get your speed up and get you a taijutsu style to match that freakish punch you got. And I know just who to go to, Enko said with a grin. Naruto followed his sensei down a road as she seemed overly secretive about where they were going. Enko glanced over her shoulder to see Naruto following her just like she used to follow the snake bastard. It both warmed and worried her, she liked having a student who was 100% ready to follow her but she didn't want a blind follower either. Naruto stops for a moment, Anko said, Naruto nodded and stopped following. Is something wrong Anko sensei Naruto asked, what does sensei mean to you? Anko asked, a sensei is someone who should teach their students or underlings the best they can so they are ready for what is to come but also must be willing to adapt to each underling, Naruto replied. Enko blinked for a moment not expecting an answer like that. And should you follow your sensei's words? Enko asked. Of course. Unless your sensei is demanding you do something you're not comfortable doing then you should tell them and refuse to commit the act. Naruto replied. Enko nodded then started to move again. Just checking let's move. Enko said. Hi. Naruto said and followed. Enko and Naruto stopped once they reached a training ground. Enko tapped her foot a few times before she pulled out a kanai and whipped it at a tree. Naruto blinked in surprise when he heard the tree yelp and a girl fell out of it. Naruto looked over at her seeing she had brown hair kept in a pair of buns and was wearing a pink button-up shirt with green pants. Where's Guy? Enko asked. Guy sensei should be back from his lap any second now, the girl said with a huff. Your stealth was fine by the way, it's just not easy to sneak up on a snake, Enko said as a brown snake slithered out from her coat. Whoa when did you summon him? The girl asked. Mitarashi san a voice echoed out as a green blur landed in the field, what brings you out here on such a youthful morning? Hey, guy I was hoping to ask for your assistance in finding a proper field for my genin's taijutsu, Enko said pointing at Naruto. Ah, you've gotten your first genin congratulations. Guy said loudly before looking at Naruto. Came san Naruto asked suddenly making Guy smile brightly. Ah, you remember me? Guy asked giving his shining smile. How could I forget you? Naruto asked, Naruto remembered Kame, he was one of few ANBU that was good to him, Anko, his precious Hibichan, Kame, which he now knew to be Guy, and then there was Niko, the cat, and Wani, the crocodile, whom he still didn't know the true identity of. How indeed, Anko said with a chuckle. Now Naruto, hit me here as hard as you can so I can gauge your strength, Guy said patting his stomach as two more figures appeared in the field. One looked like a miniature version of himself while the other had long brown hair and pale eyes. Right, Naruto said as he cocked his fist back. Wait. 
Guy brace yourself more, Anko said stopping Naruto, Guy nodded and better braced himself for the hit, okay go, Naruto nodded and ran over to Guy and sent his fist into Guy's stomach. To everyone's surprise, Guy still dropped to one knee. Guy sensei, all three of the other kids spoke at once. Holy flames of youth my boy, you hit harder than Lee, Guy said as he stood and grinned. So what do you think? Anko asked. Well he needs more speed first, Guy said once he saw Anko already nodding, once you get that up he'd be a perfect candidate for one of the Jensoken. Known as the elemental fist style each one is a unique style to an already created fighting style, Guy said. Oh that sounds awesome, Naruto said with stars in his eyes. You'll have to get your speed up and find out what your elemental release is, once you've done those I can show you the basics of one of the five, Haiken, Mizuken, Tsuchiken, Kaminari Ken or Kaze Ken. One, Guy explained. Is there anyone who uses those styles? Naruto asked. Yes, when fighting against someone who truly pushes me I used Suchiken, my eternal rival who knows the basics of Kaminari Ken, the second Hokage was a master of Mizu Ken. And Madara Uchiha was the most powerful master of Haiken ever known, Guy explained. What about Kaze Ken? Naruto asked. The only practitioner of Kaze Ken right now is Asuma Sarutobi, Guy replied. Come on Naruto, we need to get you set up so we can fix your speed, Enko said getting Naruto to silence his questions. How are you planning on fixing his speed? Guy asked. A little mix of what you did to Lee and a little of my own, Enko said with a sly grin. Ah well let your flames of youth guide you. Guy shouted before giving a thumbs up and smiling. Yeah sure, Enko said as she beckoned Naruto to follow her, Naruto gave a light bow to Guy and then quickly followed after Enko. Where are we heading now Enko sensei? Naruto asked. To one of my favorite shops in all of Kanoha, Enko replied with a big foxy grin that rivaled Naruto's, Naruto gulped then smiled figuring Enko wouldn't do anything to hurt him on purpose. Naruto marveled as he looked after sword after sword while Enko talked with the shop owner, Naruto stopped when his eyes found a sword, hey, mister, shopkeeper, why is this sword different? It's a broadsword it's thicker and sharpened on both sides, so while being slower than a katana it is stronger, the shopkeeper replied. Cool, Naruto said as he moved on. So do you have any? Enko asked. Yup one set left, the shopkeeper replied showing Enko a set of wrist guards and shin guards. Perfect I'll take them, Enko said grabbing the guards, glancing over her shoulder she could see Naruto testing the weight and speed of one of the shopkeeper's broadswords. These are really nice, Naruto said as he tested the blade with a few more swings. Also not why we are here, now try these on, Enko said handing Naruto the guards, Naruto but the sword back and but the guards on. Once he hand them on he dropped to the ground as a set of red seals showed on the guards. What's going on I can't lift my arms or legs, Naruto said as he tried to move. Give it a minute the seals are still attuning themselves to your body, Enko said. Naruto looked at the glowing red seals then nodded and waited for something to happen. Sure enough, after a full minute, the seals turned blue for a moment and then vanished. Hey I can move, but just barely, Naruto said lifting himself. Perfect this will give you a leaner build and your speed can be fixed, Enko as she led Naruto out of the shop. With Team 7, Sakura was completely lost she hadn't been able to keep up with her team at all, she could understand Kakashi Sensei but Sasuke and Sai shouldn't be this much faster than her, she was starting to hate herself. All she did was physical exercise like Kakashi Sensei demanded but she wasn't getting anywhere, she finally just gave in and stopped to catch her breath. She was soaked to the bone with sweat but she never saw her fellow teammates waiting for her no matter how far she ran, she was starting to feel abandoned and she didn't like that. She stopped dead when everything dawned on her, Kakashi Sensei had been playing favorites with Sasuke just like Naruto had been complaining about. Hirono, what are you doing out here? A familiar voice caught her, she spun to see Naruto standing a few feet away from her just after the next turn in the road. And he looked as bad as she did he looked like he had jumped in a lake with how sweaty he was. Naruto, are you, okay? Sakura asked still slightly out of breath. She did feel a little hurt that she went from Sakura-chan to Haruno so quickly. I could as you the same, Naruto said as he walked towards her. Kakashi-sensei had us go out for a jog, but I couldn't keep up and now I can't find them, Sakura said ashamed of herself. What no Sasuke sense? Naruto asked with a slight smirk. Oh shut up, Sakura said weakly before she saw a figure behind Naruto. She couldn't believe how beautiful the woman was. Ah, you must be one of Naruto's old teammates, I was wondering why my little Gaki stopped running, Anko said giving Naruto a wicked smile. 
Sorry sensei, Naruto said while rubbing the back of his head. It's fine I'll let you catch your breath for a minute, Anko said as she jumped up and landed on the fence her eyes scanning for something. So how's team 7 been? Naruto asked, confusing. I found something I really want to study but sensei hasn't helped me out with it, Sakura said. What do you mean he hasn't helped you out? Anko asked dropping back down. Well I went to the hospital yesterday to see my grandmother and I saw a mednine and I'm not sure what it was about him but I wanted to do it. I want to help people, to be able to patch them up. So I asked Kakashi sensei if he could give me a few pointers or if he knew how I could get started in becoming a mednine, and all he said was if once I get my strength up to par he would help me out. Then he went back to helping Sai and Sasuke, Sakura explained. You need to bring that up to Hokage Gigi, Naruto said. Whiskers is right, if Bakakashi isn't training you right you gotta tell someone, Enko said. I don't want to cause a problem. I'm not a clan shinobi or anything, Sakura said. She watched as Enko reached forward and flicked her on the forehead. What was that for? Sakura asked. Clan shinobi or not you are a kunoichi of the hidden leaf and deserve all the same training as the pampered princess and whoever your other teammate is, Enko said with a lot of disdain in her voice. You really think so? Sakura asked, would you think I'm weak and not as valuable as someone like Tsuminazuka? Enko asked, no but you're a sensei, Sakura said, I was a genin once too, give yourself 10 years you might be in my position, Enko said, Sakura looked at Enko then nodded, thank you. Sakura paused, Enko Midarashi, Enko said knowing it was what Sakura was searching for, thank you Midarashi sensei, Sakura said with a slight bow, ma, ma there you are Sakura. Kakashi said as he walked up, he stopped when he saw a hint of rage flash across Enko's eyes. Hey what the hell Bakakashi? Your genin tells you she wants to learn medical ninjutsu and you tell her to get stronger first. Enko growled. Watch your tongue Enko, lest you forget I am still a jonin and you are only a tokabetsu jonin, Kakashi said with a hint of venom in his voice. I'd watch your tongue Hitaki, Naruto said his eyes flashing red for a moment, I won't have you insulting a real sensei. Know your place Uzumaki, Kakashi said with a growl. Back off, Anko now stood between Kakashi and Naruto her eyes locked with Kakashi's, you don't get to talk to me or my genin like that Bakakashi, and I'll have you know. The moment I took Naruto on as my genin Hokage-sama promoted me to full-fledged jonin, Anko added one hand on her kunai pouch while the other was hidden and, unbeknownst to the one-eyed jonin, holding one hell of a venomous snake. Come along Sakura. I believe the fox and snake were playing together, Kakashi said as he simply turned and walked away with a very worried Sakura following him, she didn't get what he meant by fox and snake. Prick, Naruto said before he simply turned and started up his run, Enko kept looking in his direction for a moment then turned to watch over her genin. One hour later, Naruto had finally finished his training for the day and dropped down to the ground panting heavily, can you move still? Enko asked, barely. I'm not sure I'll be able to walk home, Naruto said weakly. Good, let's go, Enko said. Enko sensei, you're a slave driver, Naruto said as he pushed himself up. Oh, you'll enjoy my little treat for you, this is something I'll give you on special occasions, Enko said as the two started to move again. Naruto couldn't believe what he was seeing, Enko stood before him clad only in a towel, Naruto couldn't take his eyes off her, who could really? Enko smiled and stepped out of the room getting Naruto to follow like a mindless hormonal teenager set on seeing boobs. Ah that feels good, Enko said as she sunk into the hot waters of the onsen, Naruto still blushed heavily as he sat next to her in the water, Enko rested her head back feeling slightly good about herself. She had pushed Naruto to his limit, scared Kakashi away, and was currently threatening to give her genin a bloody nose that might just kill him, all in all, it was a good day. This is one hell of a reward. Naruto said trying not to look at Enko at least be beaten within an inch of his life. You earned it, and feel free to gawk. That's your reward, you get to check out my smoking hot body while we soak, Enko laughed lightly. I don't know if I could look without passing out. Naruto said his face still beat red. You'll get used to it, Enko laughed some more. Naruto just chose to look up at the stars with his sensei rather than at her obscenely beautiful body. Hey, Enko sensei, could you teach me how to summon snakes? Naruto asked. You want to summon snakes? Enko asked. Yeah, truth be told I like frogs and toads a little more but snakes are really cool too, Naruto replied. I'll think about it, Enko said. Come on let's go get out of here, Enko said as she stood and stretched but forgot to hold her towel. Naruto looked over just as the towel fell off her form. 
Anko grabbed the towel but was a second too late and Naruto got a full frontal view of her naked body. Before Anko could say a word Naruto was out cold with a river of a bloody nose as he mumbled about seeing an angel, Anko just shook her head and picked up the unconscious boy. A four-year-old Naruto stood looking up at a masked woman smiling brightly, through her mask hit her face she smiled as well. So you wanna be Hokage eh? Anko asked. Yeah. I'm going to be Hokage then I'll make Hibichan my wife, Naruto said making Anko's face turn bright red under her mask. I'm sorry what? Anko asked. You heard me. Hibichan is going to be my wife, Naruto said as he hugged Anko, and we'll have a big family and we'll be super happy, Naruto added still smiling happily. I don't think you'd really want that, by the time you're Hokage I'll be old and wrinkled, Anko said. Then we'll just have to get married before I become Hokage, Naruto said defiantly. You're really set on this aren't you? Anko asked. I never break my promises, Naruto said. Fine when you get old enough you can try and marry me, Anko smiled. Naruto shot up from his bed panting heavily, his mind was reeling, he remembered that promise now, what he had said to Anko before he knew she was Anko. Naruto dropped back onto his bed smiling and shaking his head. How did I forget something like that? Naruto asked himself as he laughed lightly. His face then turned red as he tried to figure out how he was going to look at Anko without blushing anymore with this now added on top of seeing her naked for a brief moment. Naruto dropped back and closed his eyes trying to fall back asleep not even noticing how easy it was for him to move compared to when he first put the weights on. One month later. For one month Naruto was put through a daily hell of training, each day his weights would be increased a little and they would run longer and spar harder, Anko made sure she adjusted Naruto's meals. He was only allowed ramen once every other day, his diet had gotten a complete overhaul thanks to Anko's ever watching eye on him. And all her work was paying off. Naruto was in the best shape of his life and he didn't even know it. He didn't realize how heavy his weights were or the fact that Anko would up her game the moment he came close to hitting her, she wasn't stupid, she wasn't about to take a hit unless she truly couldn't dodge it. And thanks to Guy Naruto was now the second person in Konoha that was learning and using Kaze Ken, and what shocked Guy the most was how easy it came to Naruto, it was as if the style was made for him. With each passing session, Naruto became more fluid and evasive just like the wind itself, Guy praised Naruto continuously for his amazing skill with something most jonin don't even take the time to learn. Naruto had evolved himself over time, gone was his orange jumpsuit, replaced by a pair of black pants with orange lines running down the sides. A sleeveless orange shirt that bore the kanji for wind on the back. His wrist guard weights were covered by bandages that were then covered by his very own trench coat. Unlike Enko's coat Naruto's coat was midnight black trimmed in orange and like his shirt had the kanji for wind on the back. Naruto now stood before Anko who was grinning at him, well it's time we take our first real mission, Anko said making Naruto smile. One of the things Anko got Naruto doing during their training was using his shadow clones to complete D-ranked mission. What's the mission? Naruto asked. We've got to head to the Tenchi Bridge and deliver a scroll to one of Kanahagakura's spies, Anko said. A message delivery to a spy? That seems a little odd, Naruto said. Usually this would be either an ranked or S ranked mission depending on the spy and the information, but Hokage-sama is sure that the spy won't be in danger or a danger, Anko explained. Well then I should go pack for a week's trip, Naruto said, once Anko nodded Naruto vanished in a swirl of leaves, Anko smiled at how fast he had picked up on the shunshin. She then did the same and vanished in a swirl of poison mist. A cloaked figure walked onto the bridge and slowed seeing a red-haired man walking towards him from the other side, the figure paused wondering if this was his contact or just a random passerby. Oh good afternoon, the red-haired man said with a soft smile. Afternoon, the figure spoke. The red-haired man slowed as he reached the cloaked man. What brings you all the way out here? The man asked. I'm traveling to see an old friend, the figure answered, you? He then asked. I am but a simple Ronin, that I am, the man said still smiling softly, it was at this moment the figure took in the man's appearance the man had very long red hair kept nicely tied behind his neck. He had violet and he had an X scar on his cheek. The man was wearing a pair of blue tabi socks, wicker sandals, and a white hakama with a light maroon kimono. The final thing the figure noticed was that he wore a katana on his hip. And what is a Ronin doing so far from the land of iron? The figure asked. I've looking for a peaceful place to lay my head, that I am, the Ronin replied as he offered his hand to the man, Himura Kenshin, the man smiled softly. Uchiha Itachi, Itachi said shaking Kenshin's hand. That name sounds familiar, Kenshin said as he cocked his head slightly, 
Itachi nodded in response. I'm the one that wiped out an entire clan in the land of fire, Itachi replied. That is a horrible thing to do, that it is, Kenshin replied. I had little choice. I am not here to defend myself to a stranger, Itachi replied. Of course. I'll be on my way, Kenshin said as he started to pass by Itachi, another few minutes passed as a feminine figure appeared before Itachi. I take it you're my contact, Itachi said, Enko gave a nod and the figure reached for its hood, Enko stood in shock seeing Itachi of all people. What the fuck, Enko said as she jumped back grabbing a kanai. I assume you weren't expecting me, Itachi said with a blank stare, his eyes widened for a moment before he quickly ducked narrowly dodging a sword and a body as they passed him. Now that is impressive, a henge I couldn't see through, Itachi said as the red-haired man had reappeared for a moment before Naruto was revealed. Stand down Naruto, Enko said, Naruto growled but nodded and moved behind Enko, it had taken all of his control to not make a face when he'd first heard the name. Good control over your genin, Itachi said still showing any emotion, Enko paused then tossed a scroll to Itachi, the moment the scroll was within range Itachi destroyed it. Scrolls from Saratobi Sensei are always brown with a yellow border, Itachi said as his eyes moved to Enko, trying to test me. Needed to be sure, Enko said before she tossed him the scroll he had described. Understandable, Itachi said as he pocketed the scroll, a word of warning Uzumaki, others have made the same henge you have, continued use of it can cause split personalities. Itachi said before he vanished by use of his murder of crows, what in the blue hell was that? Why is Itachi a spy? He wiped out the Uchiha clan and he's a spy for us. Naruto asked in shock. I don't know, we'll have to ask Hiruzen when we get back, Anko said as the two turned only to find a rather large group of bandits moving towards them. Oh great that bandit group we passed caught up to us, Anko said having remembered passing the group with little difficulty on their way to the bridge. Should I scare them off? Naruto asked with a slight grin. Oh this I have to see, Anko said taking a step back. Taju Kagebushin no Jutsu Naruto shouted as roughly a hundred Narutos appeared. Henge no Jutsu, all of the Narutos called out, all of the Narutos became cloaked in smoke and slowly faded revealing a massive squad of warriors. Each one wore flannel skirts and held weapons ranging from broadswords and shields to large two-handed swords. Each one held a different look some had short black hair some had long blonde hair but all wore blue war paint. The bandit group stopped dead seeing the miniature armor of near-naked men clad in skirts. What the hell is this? The head bandit said taking a step back. Invictus Manio. The horde cried out as they charged at the bandits, Anko burst out into laughter when the bandits started to trip over themselves as they ran from the strange horde of men. After a few minutes, Naruto returned laughing his head off. So what was that? Anko asked. I call it my shadow clone horde ability, as for their appearances, they came from a book Kiba told me about, he said it was bloody and had a lot of death in it, the people were called Celts I think. Naruto explained. And what was it you shouted? Enko asked. Invictus Manio. It means, I remain unvanquished, Naruto answered. Not bad, now let's get home, Enko said, Naruto nodded and the two left the bridge. Back in Kanoha. Two days had passed and Sakura sat waiting to talk to the Hokage, she didn't want to rat out Kakashi but she wanted to learn and he wasn't helping. She looked down for a moment before she heard someone call her name. Haruno-san. Sakura looked up to see Sai walking toward her. Hi Sai, Sakura said with a soft smile. Why are you here? Sai asked. I'm waiting to talk to the Hokage, Sakura said. Why are you here? Sakura asked. Same, Sai said sitting down next to Sakura. This was hands down the longest conversation they had ever had between each other. But that didn't stop Sakura from liking Sai a little. What could she say? She had a thing for dark-haired pale boys. What do you need to talk to the Hokage about? Sakura asked. I'd rather not say, Sai replied. Sakura nodded. Yup just like Sasuke he ignored her. Haruno-san, the Hokage will see you know, the Hokage's secretary said. Sakura nodded and stood up. Ah Sakura what can I do for you? Hiruzen said looking up from his last report for the day. He waited for a moment but she said nothing. He quickly figured out she was nervous about something. I wanted to. Sakura started before she stopped. It is fine, you can tell me anything, Hiruzen said. I was kind of hoping I could get a solo sensei like Naruto, Sakura said getting Hiruzen to sigh. Has Kakashi not been training you? Hiruzen asked. Yes and no, he trains me but not in what I want to learn, Sakura replied. And what is it you want to learn? Hiruzen asked. 
Medical ninjutsu, Sakura said, Hiruzen smiled happily to see someone interested in the art, his face quickly changed as he thought over Kakashi. I warned him about neglecting, Hiruzen said as he rubbed his brow, Hokage-sama. I believe it would be best if I gave my report, Sai said as he stepped in fully knowing Sakura was still there. More bad news on Hataki? Hiruzen asked. Extremely, Sai replied, with a nod, he cleared his throat and began, Kakashi Hataki has shown little to no interest in training Haruno-san even though she shows great admiration in becoming a Mednin. He focuses too heavily on Sasuke Uchiha and me, I believe he knows I am to report to you and was hoping by giving me the extra focus I wouldn't see how he ignores Haruno-san. My recommendation is to remove Hataki from the sensei program and place him back in Ambu or his jonin rank, he is not fit to train, as for the three of us, I recommend that I return to Root. Haruno-san is appointed a sensei fit to teach her medical ninjutsu, and Uchiha-san complete removal from the ninja program, Sai finished his long report. I will come back to the rest of that report, but first, why do you wish to return to Root? Hiruzen asked. I was trained to be emotionless and I find myself emotionally compromised for reasons I don't understand, Sai replied. How so? Hiruzen asked. When Hataki sensei ignores Haruno-san for instance. I find myself becoming angered at him, Sai answered making Sakura's face go red. Any other instances? Hiruzen asked. One in particular, said replied. Flashback. Sakura stood facing Sasuke, she was ready for this, she had been training herself for this, to be able to fight someone she cared out. As a shinobi she had to understand that just because she liked them or that they were friends they could also become enemies. Sakura took a slow breath and the match began, Sasuke shot forward ready to attack, and to his, size, and Kakashi's surprise his attack missed, as did the second, third, fourth, in fact he found himself unable to hit Sakura, the pinkette was dodging everything he threw at her. What's going on? Sasuke growled, Sakura smiled as she dodged another attack and backflipped a ways off. I've admired you for a long time Sasuke-kun, in doing so I've learned how you attack and how you move, Sakura said with a smile, her obsession with Sasuke has finally come into use. She was all but untouchable when Sasuke tried to hit her. Bullshit, Sasuke shouted as he ran in and started his attacks up again. Sakura did the same and dodged each attack but this time she added in a punch of her own and caused Sasuke to stumble backward and lose his footing. He had become so enraged by Sakura knowing all his attacks that he got sloppy, and now it would cost him, he fell back hitting the ground hard and quickly felt a weight on his chest. He looked up to see Sakura over him with a knee on his chest and her fist inches from his nose. Looks like I win, Sakura smiled happily, with a near happy cheer, she got off Sasuke and let him up. Well do, Sai started to say before Sasuke flipped to his feet and launched the hardest punch he could at Sakura who was miles off in her victory to notice, it was at the last moment that she saw his fist. With all his might behind his punch, he nailed Sakura right in the face instantly knocking her out and slamming her to the ground. Before Sasuke could say a word he found himself in the same situation he had put Sakura, Sai's fist was in his face before he could react, and just like Sakura he took the hit and was smashed into the ground. But unlike Sakura, he kept his consciousness, he looked up to see a rage-filled look in Sai's eyes. That is not how you act after losing a spar nor is it how you should treat a teammate, Sai said before he moved over to Sakura making sure she wasn't severely hurt. Flashback end. And Hataki did nothing? Hiruzen asked, Sai shook his head answering him, how long ago was this? Hiruzen asked, in answering him again Sai looked to Sakura who refused to look at them. Sakura how long ago was this? Hiruzen asked. A while, Sakura lied. It was yesterday, she's using a hench to hide her bruise, Sai said making Sakura look away more. Sakura show me this bruise, Hiruzen said with a stern voice, Sakura made a hand sign and the hench faded, what Hiruzen saw made him visibly look away for a moment. Her right eye was nearly swollen shut and all around it was dark purple to black, the bruise covered a good portion of her the right side of her face. Hokage-sama, Anko, and Naruto wish to speak to you, the secretary tried to warn him before the door burst open and the two entered. Okay we're back and we need answers, Anko said, she froze when she saw Sakura, this wasn't going to be good, and boy was she right, Naruto stopped dead seeing the bruise on Sakura. Sakura, who did that to you, Naruto asked. It was a mission, Sakura said trying to cover for Sasuke. And here I thought Naruto was bad at lying, Anko said. Sasuke, Naruto all but growled. 
Naruto you are to stay put, Sasuke will be handled by me, Hiruzen said making all of Naruto's rage subside, the Hokage could do far worse than he ever could. Now I will speak with you two in a moment but first, Sai please take Sakura to the hospital to have her looked at. Sai nodded and took a hold of Sakura's hand and pulled the now blushing Sakura out of the office, Hiruzen then places a seal on the wall and the pattern quickly spread over the room. With a nod he let them know they could now ask. Itachi? Was all Anko could think of to ask asked. Yes sit and I will explain, Hiruzen said. The next morning, Sasuke Uchiha stood before the Hokage visibly sweating, he'd never thought that something like this would happen to him of all people. He wasn't sure what he had been summoned for but he didn't like the looks he was getting. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, I'm putting you on probation, if you step one more foot out of line I will seal your chakra away and remove you from the ninja program. Hiruzen said making Sasuke look at him in shock. What have I done to deserve this? Sasuke asked. The main accusation was the overuse of force in your spar with Haruno-san. From reports from both Haruno-san and Sai you had clearly lost and instead of taking your loss with humility you lashed out and attacked Sakura, Hiruzen said. She should have let down her guard, a real enemy wouldn't let her celebrate, Sasuke said. She would have killed or incapacitated a real enemy, a friend and teammate all she should have needed to do is just pin you, Hamura said. Do you want to know how much damage you did Haruno-san? Koharu asked. How much could a single punch do? Sasuke asked. Let's see. Thanks to your advanced strength and her hitting the ground, she has a fracture on the back of her skull, a severely bruised cheek and forehead, her eye is swollen shut, her nose is broken and she lost 10% vision in her right eye, Hiruzen said making Sasuke blink in surprise. All from one punch? Sasuke asked. You don't seem to understand, yes, she is a kunoichi but Haruno-san is still a young girl add the fact that until recently she hadn't been taking her training seriously. You might as well have punched a civilian girl in the face, Koharu said. If she can, you're done defending yourself, as of this moment you are on probation and Team 7 is shelved until we find you a third teammate, Hiruzen said. Third teammate? Sasuke asked. We've removed Sakura from your team as she doesn't feel safe around you, Hamura answered. So where is she going? Sasuke asked. We will cross that bridge once she is fully healed, Hiruzen replied. You are dismissed Jenin Uchiha. Sasuke gave a bow then all but stormed out of the office. How dare they do this to me, Sasuke growled as he walked through the office. With Naruto. Naruto dropped to the ground as he looked up at Anko who was grinning at him, you'll have to do better than that, Anko laughed. Good thing I like strong girls, Naruto said making Anko's face redden just slightly. I'm not a girl Naruto. I'm a full grown woman, Anko said as she rolled her eyes. Another thing I like, Naruto laughed. This time Anko simply rolled her eyes and removed her foot from Naruto's chest, Anko turned to see an ANBU land before her. Mitarashi-san, the Hokage wishes to see you right away, the ANBU said. I'll be right there, you're free for the day Naruto, Anko said before she vanished in a plume of purple smoke. Ramen here I come, Naruto said with a smile. Anko stepped into the Hokage's office to see him rubbing his chin. Ah Anko good timing, Hiruzen said as he handed her a report. I need you to take Naruto and get to the border of the Land of Wind. There you will meet Jiraiya and head to Sunagakir. The Kazakage has asked for assistance with his son's seal, Hiruzen said. Hi Hokage-sama, but if I may ask, why is it necessary for me and Naruto to go? Enko asked. I want Naruto to meet another Jinchuriki and the Kazakage has asked specifically for you, he has information on Orochimaru and he knows you were his student, now move out, Hiruzen answered. Hi Hokage-sama. Anko said vanishing to get Naruto. Anko stepped into Naruto's apartment she was planning on scaring the hell out of him once he came out of the bathroom. The door started to open and Anko noticed something instantly, all of his clothes were on his bed, an evil grin came to her face, this just got better. Naruto! She shouted, holy mother! Naruto shouted back as he stumbled backward, Anko started to laugh but that quickly died on her lips as she saw his near-naked form, for his age, he looked damn sexy. With a smooth and lean build devoid of all hair and baby fat, yup Naruto was dead sexy. Well now aren't you a sexy beast, Anko smiled, Naruto's face quickly flushed from her comment. Do we have a mission? Naruto asked. Yup so get dressed and pack for a week's mission, we are going to the land of wind, Anko said. Hi, Naruto nodded and passed by Anko to dress. Meet me at the gate in a half hour, Anko said before she vanished, Naruto couldn't beat down his blush from Anko seeing him only clad in a towel. 
He was happy he had decided to wear a towel and not simply walk out of his bathroom naked. Wonder what we are doing in the land of wind, Naruto thought to himself as he finished dressing and grabbed his gear. To say Naruto was worried was a massive understatement, he was going to meet another Jinchuriki, would he be cool or crazy? Yup this was probably going to end badly, Anko glanced over her shoulder seeing a slightly worried look on Naruto's face. I know you're worried about meeting another Jinichiriki, Anko said as the three stopped. You don't need to be worried, you'll have your sensei and me there, Jiraiya said. Still going to be worried, Naruto said as the three started up again. We should be there in a few hours, Jiraiya said with a smirk. Anko slipped back to walk beside Naruto, her arm wrapped around his shoulder getting him to blush lightly. Naruto glanced up at Anko seeing her smile softly, he wasn't sure what caused it but he felt better knowing Anko was with him. Seeing Naruto smile lightly Anko gave him another smile before she released him and they moved to catch up with Jiraiya. Both gave the aged shinobi an odd look seeing him writing in a little black book when they reached him, he hadn't slowed but it was clear his complete focus was on the book. Anko wondered if it was the next Aika Aika he was writing, she held back a smile remembering when she caught Karinai reading the very series she chastised Bakakashi for reading. Jiraiya suddenly put all his work away and looked back at them. Let's pick up the pace a little shall we? Jiraiya asked with a nod from both of them they took off towards Suna. Back in Kanoha, Sakura was completely red-faced, her best friend, Ino, had found out she had a thing for Sai and would not stop picking on her about it. I mean come on Sakura look how pale he is, it's like he's never seen the sun or something. I'd half expect him to sparkle or something, Ino said with a joking voice. I get it, Sakura said starting to get angry. I don't think you do, Ino grinned. Shut up Ino. Yes, I have a crush on Sai, I like dark-haired pale boys like him and Sasuke Kuen, you may not but I do, also, he's actually really nice to me he's just bad at showing it. Sakura snapped now glaring at Ino, do you really like him then? Ino asked still smirking, yes. I like him more than Sasuke, so just deal with it, Sakura almost shouted. I think you'll have to deal with it before me, Ino said confusing Sakura until her friend pointed, following her finger. Sakura's jaw just about hit the ground, there he was not five feet away. He'd probably heard the whole thing. Sai, Sakura said with a meek voice, Sai blinked a few times before a light blush came over his face and he quickly vanished. He blushed. Sakura I think he likes you too, Ino said with a smirk. She looked to see Sakura had vanished as well, rolling her eyes once more Ino just left to find her teammates. Suna, Naruto laughed loudly as he sat with two of the kids of the Kazakage, his oldest Tamari Fuma asterisk and second born Kankuro Fuma, Naruto liked them both. Kankuro was a bit off since he was dressed in all black, in a desert village, but he was still cool, Tamari on the other hand was all around attractive to Naruto, what could he say he liked older women? I have a question for you Naruto, Tamari said getting the blonde's undivided attention. Shoot, Naruto replied, is it normal for a genin to have a solo sensei in Kanoha or are you a special case? Tamari asked. Special case, my first sensei ignored me and didn't put much into my training, I complained to Hokage Gigi and he decided it was best for me to have my own sensei. Enko was chosen because she had been asking to become a sensei, it's kind of a test for her, Naruto explained. Hokage Gigi. Are you guys really related? Kankuro asked. No, he just helped me out a lot when I was little, I was an orphan thanks to the Kyuubi's attack, Naruto said. About that. How did the Yandame kill it? Tamari asked, suddenly Naruto's face changed and he sighed. He didn't, Naruto said giving them both a strange look, Tamari got the hint instantly and Kankuro followed a moment later. It's sealed in you. They both asked in a hushed whisper, Naruto nodded he was expecting the two to leave at a quick pace but both stayed. So how, how are you not crazy? Kankuro asked, my seal unlike your brothers is not just strong, it's the strongest there is, powered by the Shinigami itself, Naruto said making both of them go slack-jawed for a moment. Tamari was the first to regain herself. So do you think Jiraiya-sama can fix Gara's seal? Tamari asked. Naruto thought about it for a moment then nodded. If anyone can he can, he's the best Kanoha has to offer in the way of Fuenjutsu, Naruto said as he kicked back happy that the two didn't turn cold learning he was a Jinchuriki. How long do you think it will take? They've been at it for what four hours now? Kankuro asked. He's getting close, a voice said startling the two, Naruto just smiled as his sensei appeared next to him taking the open seat by him. Have there been any improvements yet? Tamari asked. 
Yeah, he went from being held under to sleeping on his own and snoring, Anko said letting them know that there was hope in the future from the broken family, a slash n, ohana bitches. Both Tamari and Kankaro seemed happy knowing that their family might be savable, Anko looked to see Naruto smiling happily for the first time in a while. Sure he smiled a lot more now but this one was one of true acceptance, meaning that Tamari and Kankaro knew what he was and hadn't turned away from him, this was good Naruto finally had a couple of good friends. Come on Naruto, it's time we check out for the night, we'll have an early day back to the leaf tomorrow, Naruto nodded and said his farewells. Jiraiya sat back with a long sigh he gave a nod to Raza letting him know he was done, Raza moved over to look at the new seal that covered his son's back. He was taken aback when he saw it was completely different. I had to completely rebuild the seal while you had the Shikaku out. There were contradicting seals and double redundant seals on top of each other, now it's one cohesive seal. Jiraiya said as Gara's eyes slowly opened. I can't hear mother anymore, he said with an air of relief. It felt like a massive weight had been taken from his shoulders, the deafening voice was gone and with its dispatch, everything was clearer. He looked at his father seeing a genuine smile on his face. I think it is time I explained a lot to you son, Raza said causing Gara to look at him in shock. He had never been referred to as a son before, with a nod from Gara, the two sat and began to talk. Jiraiya had already seen it was time for him to leave. The next morning came quickly and Naruto stood saying his goodbyes to Tamari and Kankuro, he turned to Gara, but before he could say anything he heard Gara ask him a question. What is it you fight for Uzumaki? You seem so much more powerful than I, Gara asked. The people that are precious to me, like my sensei, my friends in Konoha, and now you three, Naruto said. Gara looked at him with wide eyes before he looked at his siblings. Jiraiya cleared his throat and the three left without another word. Tamari, Kankuro. I'm sorry, Gara said with closed eyes. He now knew it would be a long and difficult road to tread but he would repair the damage to his family and hopefully, they would become precious to him. One week later, Naruto laid his eyes closed simply enjoying the gentle breeze that was running across the field he was in, he gave a contented sigh before he sat up feeling a presence land in the field. Sleeping were we? Anko asked looking at Naruto. Just a little, Naruto replied with a foxy smile. Well, I guess you have earned a little rest, too bad it's over, Anko said. Naruto quickly flipped to his feet ready for just about anything. What's wrong? Naruto asked quickly. We need to get to the land of waves, Anko said. What for? Naruto asked. Assassination mission, Anko said. Naruto's face fell slightly he wasn't sure if he'd be good at assassination, the killing was fine with him. He came to terms with the fact that death was part of their lifestyle. Who's the target? Naruto asked. His name is Gato and he's a hell of a big shot, Anko explained. Gato, wait as in the billionaire Gato. Isn't he kind of above my pay rate? Naruto asked. Usually yes, but the land of waves doesn't have much money so they offered up other payments and we accepted, Anko said. What other payments? Naruto asked. They've offered permanent trade routes, future students, a bridge named after the assassin, and just about anything else we want if they can get slash afforded, Anko said. You just want an Anko bridge, Naruto said with a grin, Anko matched him with a grin. Hell yeah, I can just see it now, the great Anko bridge, Anko laughed. I don't know I think the great Naruto bridge sounds better, Naruto laughed with her. We'll just wait as see, now go get your gear and let's move out, Anko said as the two both vanished, Anko in purple mist and Naruto with a swirl of orange mist. Two figures moved through a forest both moved in perfect silence as they moved. They had been traveling for just about a full day to reach the land of waves. They needed to find out where their target was hiding and what kind of security he had. So why were we hired to kill Gato? Naruto asked. We don't need a reason, just a name and a location, Anko replied. I understand that but assassinating such a powerful man should not be a C-ranked mission, Naruto said as the two came to a stop. You want the real truth? Anko asked. When Naruto nodded Anko sighed. We weren't hired to kill Gato. Anko started, a bridge builder by the name of Tazuna came to Kanoha asking for protection. Hokage-sama gave him his protection. But after he checked out the land of waves more he found the real threat, so he took it upon himself to rid the world of Gato. So no bridge, no trade, just an assassination, Anko finished. Once we kill Gato can we see which team is protecting this Tazuna? Naruto asked. Sure, Anko said before the two took off again. Gato's base. A short fat man in a black suit walked through his base heading for his office, he grinned as he passed room after room of hired mercs, he was going to have Tazuna, Zabuza, 
and that boy Haku all killed by the end of tomorrow and nothing would stop the plan he set forth. Reaching his office he let his bodyguards wait outside while he went to work. Once I get rid of this damned bridge the land of waves will be mine forever, Gato laughed, his laughter died on his lips as he felt something sharp and cold touch his neck. He looked to see a mess of blonde hair and crystal blue eyes. Speak a single word and you're dead, the blonde said, Gato quickly nodded too afraid to speak, the blonde smiled before he spun the chair and pointed at the safe. Gato didn't hesitate to jump up and open it hoping it would save his life. Once the safe was open the blonde saw what he expected, a rather massive amount of money and several other very legal looking papers. Looking to Gato Naruto made a quick sweep and the man's head left his shoulders before he could scream. Anko laid back in a tree waiting for either Naruto to exit the compound or alarms to go off. She knew the one thing Naruto had was stealth, how else could he outrun and hide from ANBU, and she was right. Not even two minutes after he entered did she see a single figure slip out of a window and make its way towards her. She smiled seeing a mess of blonde hair. So how'd it go? Anko asked. Naruto smiled and held up two scrolls. What's the second? Anko asked. All the money he had in his safe. Figured the land of waves could put it to use, Naruto said. Anko smiled and patted Naruto on the head. Well aren't you Mr. Nice Guy? Anko laughed. Come on you said we could see what team was guarding Tazuna. I wanna check it out. Naruto said getting a nod from Anko. Okay let's go, Anko said and with that, the two vanished. In Kanoha, Sasuke leaned against a tree as he watched Sakura, he was told by Kakashi to see her training, he had said she'd taken to her new training, if this was true it was something Sasuke wanted to see. So far he wasn't impressed, she was just practicing her kanai throwing and her hand seal speed, he was just about to leave when he heard Sakura speak up. You can come out now, Sakura said causing Sasuke to freeze, did she know he was there? You're getting better, a voice replied, Sasuke looked to see Sai stepping out from behind a tree, what kind of spar shall we do today? Sakura asked, pure taijutsu, let's see if we fix those holes, Sai said as a soft and real smile came over his face, want to make it interesting? Sakura asked, what were you thinking? Sai asked, Sakura smiled before she spoke, loser treats the winner to all they can eat at their favorite restaurant, Sakura suggested. Sounds fair, all I can eat tofu sounds nice, Sai said as he took his stance, Sakura quickly followed suit, what followed impressed Sasuke, for 15 minutes they fought and Sai only managed to hit Sakura 3 times, she was getting better and better, he felt jealously rising in him seeing how she was improving, time's up, Sai said as he flipped backward, Sakura gave a long sigh before she smiled, looks like you won, Sakura said, yeah 3 to 1, Sai replied, once they were both dusted off they left the training ground in the single least expected manner, hand in hand but that was after they shared a quick chaste kiss. To say Sasuke was shocked was an understatement, apparently, without his noticing one of his biggest fangirls not only moved on she was now dating on top of it. Shaking his head once he tried to figure out why he cared, once he couldn't figure out the reason he chose to take over the training ground and train for a while himself. Back in low, with a drunken burp, Tazuna sat taking a break from working on the bridge, he still couldn't believe that he got three kids and a woman to guard him, this was just unacceptable. He was just about to argue his point again when the girl in the group jumped up and took a stance. Kurinai sensei, we have two incoming fast, the girl said, can you tell who it is Hinata? Kurinai asked, not yet their faces are hard to make out, Hinata replied, I know that scent, it's Naruto, Kiba said, and sure enough after a few more seconds, a blonde mop of hair appeared on the bride, he smiled seeing who it was. Enko sensei. It's Yugi senpai, Naruto shouted. Kurinai cracked a grin seeing her best friend appear beside Naruto. What are you two doing here? Kurinai asked. Hokage-sama sent us to, Naruto stop and looked up at Enko to make sure it was okay to talk about his mission. Once Enko nodded Naruto finished his sentence, assassinate Gato. Tazuna's mouth dropped open hearing that. And did you? Tazuna asked. Yup I have proof of death in this scroll. Naruto said holding up a scroll, proof of death. Kiba asked, he was still shocked that Naruto was the first to kill and he didn't seem hung up on it, do you really want to know? Naruto asked, after a moment the group shook their heads, he's really gone. Tazuna asked, Naruto gave a foxy smile and nodded, so how's the mission going Naichan? Enko asked, clean and clear, Kurinai replied, Enko paused slightly confused. Huh, that's actually a little surprising since Gato had a price on Tazuna's head, Enko said as she thought. 
I'd have to guess whoever he hired is buying his time, Naruto replied, as if on cue a heavy mist started to flow in. Sensei, this mist has chakra in it, Hinata said in fear, Karinai, Enko, and Naruto all quickly fell into a defensive stance ready for anything, or so they thought. Instead of an attack, the mist parted and a group of people stood before them, the first was a stunningly beautiful woman with long auburn hair and crystal blue eyes. She was dressed in a blue battle dress with high heels and shin guards. The second was a tall muscular man that had a large sword on his back. He was clad in black pants and a sleeveless shirt, the lower half of his face was completely hidden by white bandages. Just to his right was a masked figure wearing a brown hakama with a teal kosode. Well, shit, Anko said knowing they were outmatched. Teammate get Tazuna to safety, Karinai said. There is nowhere safe, the woman said as she took a step forward. And there is no pay for you here. I killed Gato this morning, Naruto said, the group stopped hearing their payday was dead. Well then. The woman paused before she smiled, what's your name? Naruto Uzumaki, Naruto replied, glancing over her shoulder the group noticed two more men that weren't there only moments before. Ao, the woman spoke, the man in question had light teal hair and wore an eye patch, said man quickly pulled out a small book and looked through it, he gave a nod after a moment causing the woman to smile. Naruto Uzumaki, Jinchuriki for Kanoha, due to his appearance most other villages believe he is an unknown child of the fourth Hokage, Ao spoke causing Naruto, Anko, and Kurinai to freeze. Naruto looked to Anko then to Kurinai and the look in their eyes instantly told him that he was indeed the fourth son, why wasn't he told this? Why did they hide it from him? Looks like he didn't know, the man with the large sword said with a laugh, Naruto glared at the man his eye lit with rage, he was royally pissed now and needed to blow off some steam. Naruto. Don't. Anko shouted a second too late, the boy vanished from view making everyone gasp. Zabuza. Above you. Ao shouted, Zabuza looked up just in time to see Naruto coming at him with an axe kick, bringing his arm up to block the hit Zabuza simply laughed, right until the hit connected. Zabuza's eyes shot open as the sickening sound of his arm breaking rang out. No way, Mei said as Zabuza threw Naruto back and his now broken arm fell to his side. Who the fuck is this kid? Zabuza asked looking at his broken arm, he was pissed now, he had underestimated his foe and it cost him his arm for now. The group looked to see Naruto glaring at them but his once blue eyes were now crimson and the marks on his face became more pronounced, his nails grew out as did his teeth turning them into claws and fangs. Another flash and he was gone again, this time however he attacked the eye-patched man, Eo barely had time to dodge, he flipped back making Naruto hit the ground. He's using the fox's power, Mei said, within Naruto's mind. Why? Naruto screamed out as he punched a wall, why was the question? Why didn't they tell him? Why if he was the son of a Hokage was he so hated? Was it all because of the fox? What did he do wrong? He couldn't answer a single one of the questions, sighing slowly he suddenly noticed he wasn't in the forest with his sensei anymore. Where am I? Naruto pondered out loud, he looked around seeing it was in what looked like a sewer system. But what was odd to him was that the ground was covered in a layer of water that reached almost ankle deep. So you've come. A thunderous voice spoke, Naruto quickly spun to see simply the largest cage he'd ever seen, within the cage, he could see only a large pair of red eyes. You're the fox, Naruto said as the eyes vanished, he took a step forward to see if he could see the fox better, instead of the fox, he saw a young woman in the cage. She had freakishly long orange hair and crimson eyes, she was clad in a red and orange kimono with a yellow obi sash, behind her, nine fox tails danced slowly. I am the fox yes, Naruto felt his jaw drop, was this a jutsu? Or was this the fox's true form? What's going on, you're not a giant fox, Naruto said as he looked at the woman. No, I'm not, while the fox is my true form I can take this form to better talk with my host, the fox replied. So you're a woman? Naruto asked, would you prefer a man? I can do that if you'd prefer, as I have no actual gender, I am pure chakra, the fox replied. Whatever you want, Naruto replied. Then this form will work, now you're here, what do you want? The fox asked, is it true? Naruto asked, yes, the fox replied, you are the child of the fourth, why didn't anyone tell me? Naruto asked, you'd have to ask the Hokage that one, the fox replied, Naruto took a slow breath trying to calm his mind. Wait, why are you being so calm and nice? I sort of expected you to be evil and whatnot, Naruto said, 
Most people would assume that, but I'm quite the opposite. I'm actually rather docile most of the time, unless I'm under the influence of a genjutsu by an Uchiha, the fox explained. So wait, and Uchiha controlled you the night you attacked Kanoha? Naruto asked. I'm actually surprised you figured that out so fast, the fox replied with a light laugh. Naruto shook his head nothing seemed right at the moment. We can talk more later, perhaps you should return to your world, the fox said sending Naruto from his mind. Back in the real world, Naruto blinked a few times only to see Enko's breasts in his face, she was holding him, his face very quickly started to go red. Ah! Uh, Enko-sensei! Naruto looked up at his sensei, a look of relief was instantly plastered across her face. Oh thank heavens you're back, Enko said before she let him go, it was now that Naruto understood what she meant, the area around them was trashed. Trees were toppled and craters littered the ground but what was oddly the funniest thing was the bridge was completely unharmed, not even a scratch. Was this all me? Naruto asked. You, Mei, and Zabuza, you pushed them back, your tails started to form and they ditched, Enko explained. Enko-sensei. You're hurt, Naruto shouted seeing a rather nasty gash along Enko's side, placing her hand over it she shrugged. Things happen, Enko replied, Naruto dropped to his knees looking at the cut, he knew it was his fault. I promise, this will never happen again, Naruto said, Enko just laughed and brought him back into her arms. Don't make promises you can't keep, Enko said as she pressed Naruto's face into her bust, she looked down to see why she hadn't got a response. Only to see Naruto smiling happily with hearts in his eyes and a trail of blood coming down from his nose. Enko sensei, Naruto mumbled from his bliss-filled state, Enko just started to laugh seeing that he'd passed out. Come on Gaki let's get you someplace nicer than this, Enko said as the two vanish in a swirl of purple mist. Naruto stood before Hiruzen with a very serious look on his face, Hiruzen rubbed his brow for a moment then took a slow breath, he calmed his mind before he looked at Naruto with a saddened face. He could tell Naruto was very, very mad with him, and for good reason too. Naruto, I understand you are upset with me, but I hope you are willing to listen to me before making your judgment, Hiruzen said. I'm still here aren't I? Naruto almost growled, Hiruzen nodded and cleared his throat once. It is true, you are the child of Minato Namikaze and Kushina Uzumaki, your father sealed the fox into so he could save the village, Hiruzen started. Your mother was the fox's previous host. The night of your birth someone ripped the fox from her and turned it on the village, once a tailed beast has been removed from their vessel said vessel dies. No acceptations, your mother managed to hold off her death through sheer willpower but she was fading fast, so with the help of your father, they sealed the fox into you to save the village. Your father's final wish was for you to be treated as a hero, but obviously, that didn't happen. The council decided it was best if you didn't know who your parents were or that you were the vessel of the fox until you were either 16 years of age or a chunin. This was one of the things I feared you find out while out of the village, Hiruzen finished. Truth be told Hokage Jiji. I'm not really that mad with you, but I just can't accept that you didn't think I should know this stuff. You should have told me when I was old enough to understand, perhaps when I entered the academy, Naruto said as he shook his head. I understand your disappointment Naruto. I just hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me eventually, but for now, go home cool off and think this over. I'll send an ANBU over later with some stuff you should have gotten by now, Hiruzen said, Naruto nodded and left in a swirl of orange mist. Hokage-sama, Enko spoke up reminding the aged man that she was in fact in the room. Oh, I am sorry Enko I forgot you were here, perhaps it would be better if you took this stuff to Naruto, Hiruzen said as he stood and walked over to the wall. Placing his hand on it he funneled some chakra forward and a moment later a latch popped open and out came a large box. What's in it? Enko asked. Naruto inheritance, Hiruzen replied, it has the bank pins to his parents' accounts, his mother's kenjutsu, taijutsu, and ninjutsu scrolls along with his father's scrolls on the Raisingan, Hiration, and the ingredients to his favorite poisons, Enko nodded and took the box before she vanished in her purple mist. Kakashi walked down a road his mind drifting as he moved, his genin team was all but gone, Sasuke was on probation, Naruto had Enko for a sensei now. Sakura was being taught at the hospital and Sai well he was a little spy, he stopped when the Hokage's monument came into view, he stood for a moment looking at the face of his sensei. I've done you a great dishonor haven't I? He asked out loud, ignoring his sensei's son just because he was asked to keep an eye on Sasuke, that boy was a flight risk if he'd ever seen one. And now it seemed Naruto hated him, 
with a sigh, he vanished in a swirl of leaves, he needed to have a conversation with the Hokage. Naruto's apartment. Enko knocked softly on the door to Naruto's apartment, normally she would just burst in and do whatever she wanted, but right now Naruto was hurting and he might need some solo time to heal, so she was ready to be told he wanted to be alone. Instead, the door opened and she was suddenly embraced by her genin, she looked down to see he had clearly been crying, without another word she moved Naruto into his apartment and closed the door. What's wrong Gaki? Enko asked as she patted Naruto's head. I just don't get it, why does everyone hate me when the fourth asked for them to accept me, Naruto said as he pulled back from Enko. People make their own choices, sometimes they are just fools and wrong, Enko said as she set down the box and pulled Naruto back into her arms giving him a full hug. Sensei, did you hate me too? Naruto asked. No, I never saw you as anything other than Naruto, Enko said truthfully, it was the only thing Orochimaru taught her that she was proud of, to never judge someone until you know them. Thank you sensei, Naruto said as the two pulled apart again. No problem Gaki, now then to the subject at hand, Enko placed a hand on the box she had brought with her. This is your inheritance, look through it or not it's up to you, I'll let you have off tomorrow to rest but be ready to kick your training into high gear after that got it, Enko said. Naruto nodded as a smile came to his face. You got it sensei, Naruto said with a big foxy smile, Enko patted him on the head and then vanished, Naruto sat down and rather quickly opened the box. Rubbing his chin for a moment he tried to pick out something to start with, he decided to go with a thick black scroll that said a few injutsu on it, he knew his father was freakishly good at it. So maybe he would be. Enko's apartment. Enko sat on her bed as she debated over trying to talk to a certain snake, without letting herself get nervous or second guessing she quickly rolled through her hand signs and spoke the ever familiar words. Kuchios no jutsu. With a puff of smoke, a large white snake appeared before her, the snake looked around for a few moments before looking at Anko. Why have you summoned me? You know Manda doesn't let people sign our contract anymore, the white snake said. No, I need you to set up a meeting with Manda and me, I want my genin to sign the contract and I will get him to agree. Anko said as she kept her cool knowing that one wrong move and she would lose her right to summon snakes, the white snake paused for a moment before he finally nodded. I will see what I can do, the snake said before he vanished, Enko let the breath she had been holding go and dropped back onto her bed, taking another slow breath she let herself drift off to a nap. Two days later, Enko was worried, Naruto hadn't shown up for training, he never missed training, something was very wrong, she moved through the village at her fastest pace heading straight for his apartment. She slowed for a moment seeing Kakashi standing before Sakura, the only reason this caught her attention was it looked like Kakashi was nervous about something. Shaking her head she refocused on finding Naruto, leaping to the top of a building she gave a sigh seeing Naruto's apartment, there was no outward sign of damage or vandalism, now she was simply getting mad. Did he skip training on her? Landing on his small balcony she found she couldn't see inside, the windows were all covered with paper, opening the door she noticed one thing right away, it wasn't normal paper. This was all the Fuinjutsu testing paper, the paper was made to absorb chakra easier so a beginner in Fuinjutsu could get used to the art. Naruto. Enko called out not seeing him right away, she stopped when she saw the last thing she'd expect, books, they were everywhere, grabbing one off the top of a pile she found it was on Fuinjutsu. Actually, all of them were. Wait so he's been studying. Enko thought to herself, after placing the book back down she moved through the apartment managing to dodge piles and piles of papers and books. She figured he had to be in his bedroom. Looking around as she moved through the cluttered apartment she was amazed to see all of the fuinjutsu she could see was very advanced rather than basic level stuff. She finally reached the bedroom door and opened it, and sure enough there he was at a desk. When did he get a desk? Either way, there he was at the desk hard at work on something. Naruto, Enko called out, all she got in return was a grunt and a mumble about something almost being perfect. Naruto. Enko shouted this time. What who? Naruto shot up looking around, Enko's face froze seeing his, he didn't look like he had slept in days and he had ink all over himself. What are you doing? Enko asked. I like Fuinjutsu, it's like really easy to understand, Naruto said as he started to look through a few piles before he pulled out a paper bomb, Enko looked seeing it was deactivated as it held no chakra in it. Okay so it's a paper bomb, Enko said. Not quite, see a normal paper bomb just goes boom and that's it. This paper bomb will seep the chakra into the item or object it's on before it goes off, so instead of simply surface damage, you get internal damage too, kinda like if you hold a cherry bomb in your hand versus holding it in your fist, 
Naruto explained before he pulled out another seal, this one was massively more complex. Now this little puppy is all sorts of awesome, I call it the cleanse seal. It's still a work in progress but once it's done it can be used to remove unwanted things from a person, such as poisons, drugs, cursed seals, Anko's eyes went wide with those words. Excuse me? Anko asked. It's still a work in progress but I hope once it's done I can remove your cursed seal, Naruto said as he rubbed his eyes, he suddenly noticed he was very tired. Do you have any idea how advanced the stuff you're dabbling in is? Anko asked. Of course I do. That's why none of this stuff is going to be tested with anyone nearby, it will all be handled with shadow clones and cadavers, Naruto replied. Anko shook her head before she looked to see a pestle and motor. Were you making poisons? Anko asked. Yeah that's what just about have this research is on, I never knew poisons could be so useful, I mean neurotoxins that target muscles or nerves so you can capture rather than kill. Naruto said as he held up a vial of red fluid. What's that? Anko asked. It's my first creation, I call it foxfire poison, it's odorless, tasteless, and dissolves in water, but if you ingest it you die rather painfully too, at least in theory. Another thing I need to find a way to test, Naruto said. Enough, for now, get cleaned up and get some sleep, you haven't slept in a while I'd assume, Anko said, Naruto begrudgingly complied and moved off to his bathroom. Anko leaned against the wall while he cleaned up, she wasn't going to give him a chance to slip back into his new obsession. Several weeks later, it had been a little over a month since Naruto started down his path on Fuinjutsu and Dokujutsu, the art of poisons, and in both Hiruzen and Jiraiya's examination, he was already nearing master level. The stuff just came easy to him just like it did his father. But now there was a much more pressing issue for Naruto and Enko, the two found themselves before the Hokage, I'm going to make this short and sweet. I'm sending you with Kakashi to find Team Guy that has gone missing during their mission into the land of rice fields, Hiruzen explained. I've already debriefed Kakashi so you are to meet him at the gates and head out as soon as possible. Hi, Naruto and Enko said in unison before they both vanished in a swirl of mist heading to get their gear and meet up with Kakashi at the gates. Kakashi stood at the gates fully prepped for their rescue mission, the only time Kakashi was always on time, even early in some cases, was when a friend needed him. Turning his head he saw a swirl of purple mist and Enko appeared an instant later an orange swirl went off and Naruto appeared. Let's go, Kakashi said and the three took off at max pace. Naruto did you leave them? Enko asked. Yup, can't take any chances, Naruto replied. Kakashi was rather surprised that Naruto was keeping up with them so well. At the pace they were going it would only take them about a day to reach the land of rice fields, sooner if Naruto was able to keep up with them. Sensei, Naruto spoke out gaining both of the Jonin's attention, Enko saw the look in Naruto's eyes and then gave a nod. You know the rules this is one of the exceptions, Enko said, Kakashi wasn't sure what they were talking about, Naruto suddenly smiled brightly. Just wait until they see me, Naruto said as he suddenly picked up speed, Kakashi couldn't help but smile, whatever Enko had done with Naruto had made the young boy into a splendid shinobi. Within the land of rice fields. A singular figure stood outside a base that looked eerily like a snake's den, it sunk into the ground and became dark almost instantly, the figure was a young silver-haired man. He cracked his back once before he started to walk away, it was time for him to meld back into Kanahagakura's system so he could take the Chunin exams. He was positive this year he would have something to entertain him. Three figures landed on a tree at the last known location of Team Guy, it had been a little over a day since the three were sent to find the mission team. They had made good time but they still had to deal with a cold trail, Kakashi looked at the camp, it appeared to be where they were captured, he knew it was captured as there were several bodies but none of them belonged to team guy. Sensei I found something, Naruto said as he pulled a torn piece of bandage out of the ground, it was heavily stained with blood and dirt, that's guy's good job Naruto, Kakashi said as he quickly summoned Pakun, it didn't take long for the dog to find the scent even after this long. It's weak but I got it, Pakun said, the group was just about to take off when Naruto stumbled backward, what's wrong? Kakashi asked, we don't have time for this, Anko said worriedly, I need a minute, sorry, Naruto said before he sat and closed his eyes, he's talking to the fox, Kakashi said with a wide eye, seems so, they had their first formal meeting in the land of waves, Anko said, within Naruto's mind, Naruto looked at the maiden form of the Kyubi, just like the first time, it was using the same a rather beautiful appearance, but this time the fox seemed almost antsy. What's up? Naruto asked. I don't like this land of rice fields something doesn't feel right here, the great fox said. 
What do you mean by that? Naruto asked. I want to give you a gift, just to calm me, the fox said. What kind of gift? Naruto asked with caution. Nothing major just a jutsu, the fox said as one of its tails came out of the cage and poked him on the forehead, you'll know how to use it now, but keep it a secret. Naruto blinked a few times as his mind was suddenly given all the information on this new jutsu. I'm okay thanks, Naruto said blinking a few times. Another moment passed and he was outside of his mind again. Let's get going, I'll explain later, Naruto said, and with that, the three took off to find the missing team. Naruto said nothing about why he and the Kyuubi wanted to talk but he also knew that Anko and Kakashi were both worried about it. A half hour later, Naruto, Anko, and Kakashi stopped seeing Pakun had found a strange base, it was partially buried in the ground, the good news was guy's scent was in there. Bad news so was what Pakun called the foulest smell he'd ever come by. So how do we want to proceed? Anko asked looking at Kakashi, can you send a snake in to look around? Kakashi asked, Anko nodded and several snakes slid out of her coat and down into the base. Sensei. I have a bad feeling about this place, Naruto said as he stared into the base. Anko was just about to talk when her head snapped back to the base and she took off inside. Naruto and Kakashi quickly followed them. Sensei what's wrong? Naruto asked. It's his base, Anko said as she ran through the base. Shit this is bad, Kakashi said as she pulled up his Hitai 8 and readied for anything. Naruto nodded in agreement and then suddenly just stopped causing both Kakashi and Enko to almost fall as they stopped too. Why did you stop? Kakashi asked. That's why, Naruto pointed, the two jonin looked to where he was pointing to see none other than Guy chained up and unconscious, Kakashi practically flew over to Guy. Guy! Guy are you okay? Kakashi said slowly getting Guy to come to. Kakashi? Where am I? Guy asked. You and your team were captured by Orochimaru, Kakashi said, Guy's eyes fully opened as he remembers what had happened and how he and his team were captured. We were resting for the night, the last thing I remember was a purple mist then blackness, it happened faster than even I could register, Guy said as he easily snapped the chains holding him. Come one we need to find your team, Enko said as the four quickly started to move. They looked through the base but found it to be far too massive to search in a group so against their better judgment they split up. Anko didn't like the idea of leaving Naruto alone in the base but they needed to get in and get out as fast as possible. With Naruto, Naruto used all of the stealth he had to move through the darkened halls, he stopped when the jutsu that the Kyuubi had given him finally made sense, rolling through a few hand signs Naruto grinned and spoke. Meipo, Anko Kukai no Arakimasu, 1, Naruto said, it only took a moment for him to feel the effects, he suddenly sunk into the shadow of the wall. Welcome to the shadow world Naruto, the Kyuubi's voice spoke. Naruto looked around seeing everything was the same but somehow different. How does this place work? Naruto asked. You can move freely throughout any place without being seen, heard, smelt, or touched, but you can't affect anything either. You have to use the jutsu again to leave the shadow world and regain your ability to hurt those not in the shadow world, the Kyuubi explained, Naruto nodded and started his search once more. But now he feared nothing as he casually walked through the halls, he looked into each room trying to find any of Guy's genin, then the idea hit him. Taju Kagebushin no Jutsu, Naruto spoke as around 50 Naruto's came into existence in the shadow world. Spread out find Rock Lee, 1010, or Niji Hyuga, disperse if you find one, Naruto commanded, and with that, the entire clone army took off to find the missing genin. Naruto on the other hand decided to look and see if he could find any treasure. With Enko. Enko moved swiftly but was also greatly frustrated, she didn't like leaving Naruto alone in such a place and to add to her annoyance she couldn't find any of the missing genin. But she had managed to find several shinobi, they all died of course, Anko slowed starting to feel exhausted, figuring she would rest a bit in the next room she opened the door and froze dead. The room was full of bodies, each one was experimented on in some way and none of them were full bodies, parts were missing for each body, Anko closed the door quickly unable to believe what she had just seen. She knew her old master was a monster but she never guessed he was that bad. Shaking her head she started to move again in hopes she would find one of the genin alive. Back with Naruto. Naruto slipped out of the shadow realm after he found a room that interested him, it was full of jars and weird trophies. But what caught his attention was a small stale blue colored ring with the kanji for void on it, what made it so strange to Naruto was that it was on an old decrepit hand. Naruto quickly slipped the ring off the finger and slipped back into the shadow realm to look at the ring. Well this is strange, but I kinda like it, 
Naruto thought as he slipped the ring on his left pinky finger, he was surprised to see it resized itself to fit on his finger. Pulling it off he looked at the inner ring and sure enough, there was a resizing seal on it, with a satisfied nod, he slipped the ring back on and left the room. Once he left the room he felt a clone disperse and took off knowing the clone had found the genin, he reached the room in no time and slipped into finding a guard opening the gate to the room 1010 was in. Well, now girly, ready to have some fun? The guard asked. Try anything and I'll kill you, 1010 growled. I like them feisty, the guard laughed, I'll enjoy breaking you, Naruto moved behind him and exited the shadow realm. Tenten's eyes went wide as she watched a figure rise out of the man's shadow a tonto in hand, the guard tilted his head seeing a grin come to Tenten's eyes. What's so funny girl? He asked, his eyes snapped wide when he heard a voice whisper into his ear. She's smiling because she knows you're dead, Naruto said as he plunged his tonto through the man's back and out his chest impaling his heart and killing him instantly. Once he removed his tonto Naruto looked to see Tenten smiling at him. Boy am I ever glad to see that Hitai ate, Tenten said with a sigh of relief, Naruto nodded and placed a finger on a transmitter on his neck. Inu, Hibi, came, come in, Naruto spoke. Did you find them? Kame's voice quickly spoke. Yes come to my location, they are hurt but alive and stable, Naruto replied. Well done Kitsune, the voice of Hibi replied. Within two minutes Guy, Kakashi, and Anko all appeared in the room to see Niji, Lee, and Tenten all resting but free of their restraints, are they okay? Guy asked. I'll survive, Niji said. I've been better, Tenten replied with a smile. My flames of youth have been dampened but not extinguished Guy sensei, Lee said and he got to his feet. Then we should get out of here with all due haste, Naruto said, the group all agreed and they all left with each of the jonin carrying a genin, against their will, so they could go top speed. They all wanted to get as far away from the base as they could. The group came to a stop when they saw a figure standing at the exit of the base. The figure was a young boy with white hair and teal eyes, he wore a loose-fitting long-sleeved shirt, black pants, and a rope belt, two red dots adorned his head. You are not allowed to leave, the figure said. I can take him, Naruto said. Like hell just let one of us take him out, Anko said. Anko he says he can do let's let him do it, Guy said placing a hand on Anko's shoulder. Anko glared at Guy but gave in and let Naruto move in front of the jonin. Kick his ass and catch up fast, Anko said, Naruto nodded and the jonin shot past, the white-haired boy didn't even manage to try and attack before they were past him. Turning his attention back to Naruto the two squared off. Time to have some fun, Naruto said as he readied for the fight of his life. Naruto stood face to face with the white-haired boy, neither of them had moved, obviously, both were waiting for the other to go first, the white-haired boy pointed a finger at Naruto. Naruto was just about to speak when he saw a bone shoot out of his finger, his eyes shot wide with shock. He hadn't seen that coming so the bone, sure enough, hit him dead on but lucky it was just his shoulder. Was that your bone? Naruto asked, the boy simply nodded. That's weird, Naruto said as he drew his tonto, Naruto charged forward only to see the boy draw a sword out of his shoulder, tonto and bone blade clashed. Naruto had the greater strength and shot the white-haired boy back. Your blade is broken. Kimimaro said making Naruto look to see he was right, he won the battle of strength but his sword was heavily cracked. Guess I'm down to kunai in my taijutsu, Naruto said as he took a strange stance. Your, Kimimaro started to say before Naruto vanished and smashed his hand into Kimimaro's chest throwing him out of the hall and into the small clearing in front of the base. Kaze Ryu, Repusho, 1, Naruto said as wind chakra danced around his hand, jumping into the clearing Naruto ready to start round 2. Kimimaro stood up showing no damage as his bones had come to the surface of his skin and absorbed the damage. My Kekiai Genkai protects me, Kimimaro said as he dropped his sword and grabbed his neck. Naruto felt sick to his stomach for a moment as he watched the boy pull out his spine making it into a whip. Kaze Ryu, Repo Ashute, 2, Naruto said as he spread out his fingers and wind chakra started to dance around each one, Kimimaro said nothing and charged in with his whip. Naruto expertly dodged the whip and planted his fingers on the boy's chest. Kaze Ryu, Repu Ashute, Kai, 3, Naruto shouted, Kimimaro's eyes shot wide as his bone armor did little to stop the freakish power burst of wind that emitted from the blonde's fingers. Just as the first attack Kimimaro found himself sailing through the air, this time however he smashed into a tree, he looked to see Naruto still in the same stance, looking down at his body he was bleeding. His Kekiai Genkai hadn't been able to completely take the hit. You're far stronger than I had expected, Kimimaro said as a strange black pattern started to etch its way over the boy's body. With Enko, 
Gai, and Kakashi. Anko, Kakashi, and Gai all jumped through the forest, that was until Anko all but collapsed in pain, she grabbed her shoulder as she writhed in pain, she hadn't felt her curse mark flare up like this in ages, she knew why too, it meant he was near, he's close. Orochimaru is close, Anko said as she gasped in pain. Kukuku that I am, Orochimaru's voice answered as the aforementioned man rose out of the ground, now then I hadn't even started my experimentation on you, what do you want with me and my team? Guy asked, you're Genin and you have something I'd like to test, your eight gates, the Hyuga's eyes, and your little clone, now he is the most interesting, I wanted to see what I could do with a non-existent chakra system, Orochimaru said as he looked at the two standing Jonin. We won't let you touch them, Kakashi and Gai said together. You really want to fight me? Orochimaru asked. To protect what is precious to me, of course, Gai replied. Kakashi remained silent as he charged a Chidori. Orochimaru smiled as he saw the two men getting ready to fight him with everything they had. He was more than confident that he could fight them, but his limited knowledge on the eight gates held him back. You seem to be missing one, Orochimaru said. He's taking care of your white-haired boy, Kakashi said. Then he's as good as dead. Kimimaro is a member of the Kagaya clan and has a very deadly Kekiai Genkai, Orochimaru said with his ever-existent sneer. Anko clawed at the ground trying to fight the pain in her shoulder, she wouldn't let this curse seal beat her, not when Naruto needed her. Oh my you've gotten stronger I see, Orochimaru laughed as he watched Anko struggle to her feet, her eyes burned with rage as she looked at Orochimaru. Either fight us or leave, Guy said as he readied to open his gates. I think I'll pass fighting the two of you might hurt a fair deal, Orochimaru laughed, by the time you let people know that I have a base here it will be gone, so enjoy your hollow victory. Orochimaru added as he sunk into the ground. Anko felt the pain in her shoulder subside instantly, sparing only a glance to the other jonin she took off to find Naruto. With Naruto, Naruto crashed into a tree and slumped to the ground, this weird white-haired kid had suddenly gotten stronger and uglier, his first set of weird marks didn't do much. He got faster and stronger but that was about it, his Kaze Ryu was more than enough to beat him, but now the kid had changed even more, his once pale white skin had turned an earthy brown. He had bone spikes coming out of his back and tail, yeah he grew a tail too. What the fuck kind of fuinjutsu is that? Naruto wondered, struggling to his feet he took his stance for his Kaze Ryu again, but this time the stance had changed again. It's useless to try and fight me, Kimimaro said as he charged forward with his large bone spear. As he reached Naruto he felt a powerful rush of wind followed by Naruto's palm smashing into his stomach. Kaze Ryu or Repu Shou Tatsu. Fourth, Naruto shouted, Kimimaro coughed up blood as he shot through the air and through several trees, he was seriously starting to dislike this Kaze Ryu that the blonde had. Getting to his feet once more he charged at Naruto only to stop seeing Naruto was in the same stance, he knew he'd need a new tactic to reach the blonde. Thinking quickly Kimimaro spun launching a few bones from his tail at the blonde. Naruto flipped out of the way but found himself right in the bone user's trap. Before he could return to his stance the deformed kid was on him. Gah! Naruto cried out as Kimimaro plunged a bone sword into Naruto's shoulder. Pulling his arm back Kimimaro left the blade in Naruto's shoulder to hold him in spot as he ready to end the fight. Making another sword he pointed right between Naruto's eyes. As to be expected, I was trained by Orochimaru. You were a good fight but in the end, the outcome was to be expected, Kimimaro said as he pulled his blade back. I'm not done yet, Naruto said as he brought his leg up and let the bone blade stab into his leg. Naruto managed to hold back his scream of pain but only just. Postponing will do nothing, Kimimaro said. It allowed me to gather enough wind chakra to do this, Naruto said as he pointed two fingers at Kimimaro. Kaze ryu, Shijiki Kaze no Yaiba. 5. Naruto shouted as the wind chakra that had wrapped around his fingers shot forward and tore through Kimimaro's head leaving a gaping hole. Naruto dropped backward with a satisfied smile before he looked at his hands, both were heavily damaged from the use of the Kaze Ryu, but his pointer and middle finger were the worst. He knew using the Shijiki Kaze no Yaiba would hurt but not this bad, he could hardly feel his hands, dropping them to his sides he looked to his shin where the boy's blade still stuck out. He tried to move then grunted, he had forgotten the blade in his shoulder for a moment. Looks like I can't catch up, Naruto said as he closed his eyes, he figured he'd bleed to death before anyone friendly could find him, but it seemed like Kami smiled down on him. Naruto. Naruto's eyes slowly opened as he saw Anko land in the clearing, she ran over to him seeing he was bleeding heavily. Anko sensei, Naruto said as he looked at his sensei. 
You fool you should have let one of us take care of the boy, Anko said as she looked to see the body of the boy, she couldn't lie that was one dead body, turning back to Naruto she saw him smiling up at her. Here I thought I was a goner, Naruto said as he watched Anko pulling out the basic medical supplies she had, without warning or even the slightest signal she grabbed both bone blades and pulled them out. Of course, Naruto shouted all sorts of vulgarity as she did. That's what you get for going all lone wolf on me, Anko said before she started to gauze and wrap his wounds. You know you really look like an angel right now, Naruto said. Anko rolled her eyes but wasn't able to stop a small blush from coming to her cheeks. Just stay still, Anko said. There you are, the voice of Guy echoed out lightly as the group landed. Hey, Kame san Bakakashi, Lil, Kame, Buns, and Pale Force are here, Naruto said making all five stops with a pause. Buns? Oh that better be about my hair, Tenten -ten said with a light growl. Of course, it is, Naruto said as he tried to stand only for Anko to push him back down. I said stay still, Anko said as she started to wrap his shin, Naruto simply nodded and remained still until Anko finished wrapping his shin and shoulder. It appears that you had a most youthful fight here, Lee said as he looked at the now burning body of Kimimaro, Kakashi had quickly chosen to roast the body so Orochimaru couldn't have it. Naruto was allowed to sit up while Anko started to wrap up his hands, Guy quickly noticed the damage and knew what would have caused that. I thought we had agreed you'd only use the Kazeryu as a last resort, Guy said looking at Naruto who nodded. Unfortunately it was my last resort, he broke my Tonto with a single hit, my shadow clones proved useless as he dispatched them as fast as I could make them, so my only choice was Kazeryu. It worked but I had to resort to the Yaiba, Naruto explained. I'll let it go since I don't see you lying about something like this, we'll have to get your hands examined better once we get back to the village, Guy said. Why is the Kaze Ryu so bad Guy Sensei? Ten Ten asked. Each of the Genso Ken styles has drawbacks to them, Hairyu leaves bad burns, Suchiryu damages the bones, Kaminari Ryu damages the nerves, Mizuryu weakens blood flow, and Kaze Ryu damages the skin and muscles, prolonged use of any will cause irreversible damage to the user's hands Guy explained. Why use them then? Niji asked. A true master of the styles takes a significantly less amount of damage and can deal out a devastating amount of damage, Kakashi answered before Guy could. So where does Naruto's skill set? Anko asked. She needed to know mainly because she knew next to nothing about the Gensoken. He's progressing well so I'd put him at an intermediate level, Guy said as he looked at the damage Naruto had to his hands. Naruto, what's this? Anko asked seeing the ring on Naruto's left pinky. Oh, I found that in the snake's base, it looked kinda cool so I snagged it, Naruto replied, Anko simply shook her head and wrapped his hand. Once Naruto was fully wrapped up the group ready to move, Naruto smiled as he had managed to defeat a strong foe, steal a cool looking ring, and soon he would have an S ranked mission on his mission record. Yup this was a win for him. Man I'm lucky, maybe I should buy a lotto ticket, Naruto thought as the group moved towards Kanoha, Anko couldn't believe how she felt. After feeling that she might have lost her only student she felt only one thing, fear, she didn't want to lose Naruto, she already knew she cared far more for Naruto than she should. Anko you there? Kakashi asked. Ah, what? Anko said as she zoned in. We need to set up camp for a rest, the genin, Naruto especially, need to rest for a bit, Kakashi said. Oh yeah sounds good, Anko said, with that, the group stopped to rest, they knew it would be a short rest so all four genin quickly settled down and fell asleep. Naruto of course was asleep almost instantly thanks to his exhausting fight with Kimimaro. Anko stayed on high alert she didn't believe that her former sensei wouldn't try to get revenge, he seemed to hold whoever the boy was in high regard and now he was dead. So she wasn't going to drop her guard for a moment. Anko about your mark, Kakashi spoke. Not now, Anko said quickly, she wasn't going to go into that here, maybe back in Kanoha with someone she trusted more but here and now was not an option, Kakashi narrowed his eye, he didn't like that Anko was so affected by her curse mark, Anko sensei, Naruto suddenly sat up his eyes wide, a wide grin came to his face as he looked at his sensei, okay now I'm worried, Anko said seeing his smile, I think I might have figured out what my seal was missing, Naruto said as he was suddenly full of energy, what seal? Ten Ten asked now interested in the conversation, this can all be talked about later, when we aren't in hostile territory, Anko said. Anko is right, we should get moving, Kakashi said. My eternal rival is right, we should get moving and get back to Kanoha, Guy said with his trademark smile. Then let's go, Naruto said as the group got up and ready to start moving again. A while later, 
It took the group only a day to get out of the land of rice fields, but they knew they had to stop and rest before they'd be able to reach home, and sure enough, when nightfall came the group set up a cold camp, Kakashi had volunteered to take the first watch knowing that guy would just think it was a challenge to try and be the watch for the whole night. Anko had chosen to pull Naruto aside so the two could have a private chat, Naruto assumed he was still in trouble of course, Naruto about that fight of yours, Anko started, I know. I'm sorry I should have let one of your handles him, but I really wanted to show that your training made me strong, Naruto said as he looked at the ground. Naruto you don't have to do that to prove you're strong, Anko said. I know sensei, I just. I was hoping if I could beat someone that the bastard had trained I would, Naruto started before he blushed heavily, Anko got a little red too knowing what he was going to say. You thought that would impress me? Naruto I don't want you trying to do that, I want you safe and alive, Anko said. Naruto continued to look down unable to look his sensei in the eye. He was ashamed of himself. He froze when Enko suddenly hugged him. You can't win me over if you're dead, Enko said causing Naruto to flush even more. You say that like I have the chance to do it, Naruto said with a smile. Of course you do, you are a young handsome boy who will grow into a strong handsome man, as long as you don't do something stupid like that again, Enko said. Sensei, Naruto spoke softly. What? Enko asked. He had that look in his eyes, the look that seriously made her think the little guy was thinking of the most perverted thing he could. When we get home, could we go to the hot springs? Naruto asked with a beet red face. I don't know, I'm upset that you thought you had to fight by yourself, but you did win that fight, Anko said while rubbing her chin, she glanced to see Naruto looking at her with hope. She almost wanted to laugh seeing it, the kid really was a little pervert well at least when it came to her nowadays. Please sensei, Naruto said while doing his best to give his sensei the biggest brightest eyes he could. Oh fine I guess we can, Anko said making Naruto almost shout in joy, he would have had they not been trying to keep a low profile. You're such a perv you know that right, Anko said. Hey I am not, Naruto shot back. Oh yeah then what are you? Anko asked. I'm an ankaholic, Naruto said causing a deadpan look from Anko. You're such a dumbass, Anko said before she laughed lightly. Yeah and I could be your dumbass, Naruto said, trying a little hard there aren't ya? Anko asked making Naruto display his trademark foxy smile. Maybe a little, Naruto said, just go get some rest, Anko said while shaking her head. The next afternoon, the group had made it home and thus the rescue mission was a success. But the moment Orochimaru was involved the mission was upgraded to an S ranked one. Naruto was overly hyped that he now had an S ranked mission under his belt. But now something much better was happening, he was at the hot springs, with his sensei, yup Naruto felt like one lucky son of a bitch, with a wide grin, he stood in his changing room. He was really hoping he'd be lucky enough to have another towel dropping experience. Man I wish I knew how to make sensei see how much I care about her, Naruto thought. Why don't you just bend her over and take her, the voice of the QB echoed out. I would never force myself on her, Naruto replied instantly. Who knows she might love it, the QB replied. Not happening, now shut it I wanna enjoy the waters, Naruto replied as he wrapped his towel around his waist and entered the hot spring, he smiled seeing his sensei was already there clad in only a towel. Naruto barely managed to pull his eyes away. There you are, Anko said with a smile, Naruto nodded and slipped into the waters, Anko couldn't help but bit her lip lightly seeing Naruto's form, he had drastically changed from the first time. Now he was all but a god among men, the 14 year old boy was well sculpted and flawless, a bonus of the QB he didn't scar, in all truth that disappointed Enko slightly. While scars would mean Naruto had gotten hurt they were so damn sexy. Enko sensei, Naruto said with a very red face. What is it Naruto? Enko asked. I was wondering, there are chunin exams coming up, Naruto said. Can't, Enko said, Naruto nodded he knew that he couldn't enter them, they required a team. I understand, Naruto said, you can't because I'm not training you to be a chunin, Enko said, and you've lost me, Naruto said with complete confusion, Hokage-sama told me to train you to be the best, so when I'm done you will be at least a tokabetsu jonin rank, Enko said, you want me to skip chunin? Naruto asked, basically, but if you really want to take the exams then I'll get you in them, Enko said, I would like to, it would be a good test for me, Naruto said. Then I will inform Hokage-sama, Enko said as she stood, she had been in the water long enough, Enko grabbed her towel this time, she wouldn't be flashing Naruto again, Naruto blushed heavily but did nothing. He had been beating on her losing her towel. And in that very moment, Enko slipped as she got out of the water, the only thought in her head was how. 
Did she slip? She never slipped, Anko caught herself without incident or so she thought, that was until she looked over her shoulder, there stood Naruto with the reddest face ever, Anko lowered her head in defeat, standing she quickly left to get dressed. Naruto's brain had shorted out, when Anko fell her towel had slipped up and he had gotten a perfect look at Anko's most intimate spot, he didn't know what to say, but he was happy to know that her hair was natural. I'm such a pervert, Naruto thought as he got out of the waters and moved to get dressed. The next day, Naruto and Anko stood together in a field, Anko smiled as she looked down at Naruto, it was time to start preparing him for his chunin exam. He wanted to take them so he had to be ready because unlike others he would have to do it alone. Okay Naruto where Anko started as she placed a hand on Naruto's shoulder, as she spoke she noticed a puff of smoke went off. The two quickly dropped into their defensive stances only to see they now stood before the last thing either wanted to be, simply the largest snake either of them had ever seen, Anko instantly knew who it was. Manda, Anko said in pure fear, Naruto saw his sensei was fearful of the great snake before them, for good reason too it was simply gigantic. You little girl. You wanted to see me, the voice of Manda boomed out. Why, yes I wanted to get my student the snake contract, Anko said stealing herself. Never this boy smells of foxes, Manda spoke. He's, I do not care what he is. Manda roared, for your insolence, you will die. He added as the great snake lashed out, Anko's eyes shot open as she watched the great snake all but fly at her, his massive fangs were ready to skewer her, for the first time, she could remember Anko froze. Not from the pain of her cursed seal, but in fear, her legs wouldn't move. This is it, Anko thought, her mind started to race as she thought but every thought simply came back to the same end, Naruto, he was all she could think of, Kazeryu or Repu Shou Tatsu. Naruto's voice screamed out as he attacked the great snake, Manda roared in pain as the blonde strike nailed his right eye, the great snake rolled back in pain, the blonde had stolen his eye from him, you bastard. Manda roared as he looked for Naruto, Kazeryu, Shijiki Kaze no Yaiba. Naruto roared as an entire wind chakra-coated hand shot at the great snake's left eye, another massive roar of pain erupted from Manda as his other eye was stolen from him. Naruto hadn't stopped yet his hand stung from the yaiba but he would protect his sensei. Tajukage Bushin no Jutsu, Naruto shouted as he brought as many clones as he could into creation. What are you, planning boy? Manda roared as he slammed around trying to hit Naruto, he was mad and Naruto knew this, the great snake was not focused nor clear-minded, and that would be his downfall. All together now. Naruto shouted, Kazeryu, Kyukyoku Jutsu, Gufushoha, 6, all the clones called out together. Anko had finally snapped out of her daze just in time to see Manda being sliced to pieces but the most powerful ability that the Kazeryu had, an ability Naruto shouldn't know yet. Naruto wasn't strong enough in the Kazeryu to use such a powerful attack, that was when Anko noticed the massive amount of clones, Naruto had overcome his lack of skill and experience with pure numbers. Manda was dead, couldn't get much deader, he was sliced and diced, chopped and minced, and all around the place, literally, he was in pieces. Naruto you killed Manda, Anko said in shock. Naruto panted as he looked at his sensei, Anko rushed to Naruto seeing the damage to his hands, both hands were coated in blood and simply laid at Naruto's sides. Yeah, I guess I did, I'd do it again if it protected you, Naruto said weakly. Anko then saw why Naruto was getting paler, upon Manda's death, his fangs were sliced up as well, one of the shards had nailed Naruto right in the stomach, Naruto, Anko caught him as he fell backward, Anko noticed the puff of smoke went off again, she looked to see they were back in the field they had been in, that meant one thing for sure, Manda was dead, after all, he had summoned them to him, Anko scooped Naruto up into her arms and ran toward the hospital, she needed to get Naruto checked over, she wouldn't let him die for her, Especially since he hadn't kept his promise he still had to win her heart and marry her.